looks like I'm live, and I apologize, I'm driving, so there is bound to be some road noise. And uh, I just feel like this is a good use of my time to put out a video this morning. No editing, no, uh, no nothing, man. We're just going raw, baby. We're just raw dogging this one. And so you got my steering wheel here. You got the shaky cam. And, uh, holy cow, it's really shaky. Maybe this wasn't a smart idea. But anyhow, what I want to talk about this morning is, um, narratives. I subscribe to a lot of silver stacking YouTube channels. And I find myself unsubscribing from at least one a day for various reasons. Um, shills, if, if you spend half of your video shilling for a mining stock, I don't need you anymore. Um, if, especially when I see the same 12 stackers, big stacking channels, shilling for the same mining stock in a day, they all release a video on a day and they're all shilling for the same silver stock, you're gone, don't need you anymore. You're no good to me, and I don't think you're very useful to the community anymore. Um, the other thing is, is uh, that has me unsubscribing is narratives. We love silver. We stack silver because we believe a narrative in our mind. We've convinced ourselves that it's true, and therefore we stack. And it doesn't matter what that narrative is. The zombie apocalypse is coming, and silver's going to be money again someday, so we stack silver. Uh, we we believe that Morgan dollars are going to triple in value because of rarity, so we stack Morgan dollars. Uh, there's there's a million narratives that uh, that are out there, and obviously I'm exaggerating for effect, but there's a lot of narratives out there. What I want to talk about are five narratives I hear repeated over and over and over and over that honestly should just be ignored. They should have nothing to do or very little to do with the reason that you buy silver. And the reason I say that is because if you stack because of this narrative, you're going to get frustrated, I believe, in the in the short term, and you're probably going to stop stacking. And I believe that's a mistake because... Stacking, in my opinion, if you look historically, stacking is a long-term play. It's a long-term deal. And uh, um, if you're going to do it right, you have to be playing the long game. If you believe these narratives, you are going to have short-term frustration and probably sell your stack at a loss and stop stacking. It's one of the reasons I believe silver is going to crash hard that we will see $14, $15 on silver again is because the Wall Street apes are going to go ape crap when they see that, oh, boy, this isn't a meme, a meme stock that's going to go to the moon, as the narrative states. And, uh, you know, silver that they were buying at 33 34 bucks an ounce because someone said, hey, you know, stack my way and get American silver eagles. And uh, they're, they paid... Eleven dollars over spot. They go to the LCS and sell it at three bucks over spot. Well, I thought I was going to retain some of my uh, some of my premium here. Well, you did, just about a quarter of it. So anyhow, so let's get done brass tacks here and talk about the narrative that I believe should be ignored. One of the narratives that I believe should be ignored for the short term by all stackers is that silver has a lot of industrial uses, and therefore it's going to be worth more money. Solar panels, electric vehicles, uh, cell phones, microwave ovens, light switches. Yeah, there are a lot of industrial uses for silver. But at the same time, um, there always has been. But technology has changed, for example. So silver used to be heavily used in photography. And uh, in the, in the uh, um, like, 
for example, developing film. Well, guess what? Doesn't exi- it doesn't exist anymore. You know, we have digital cameras now. So, really, something has just backfilled a demand that went away, right? There's no question that there's going to be more uh, more industrial demand, but that is a long tail thing, right? Like Elon Musk isn't going out to buy, you know, Comex bars to put in the Tesla factory for manufacturing. In fact, I think an electric vehicle has less than an ounce of silver. Correct me in comments if I'm wrong there, but it's not much. How many electric cars would have to be on the road for that to really have an impact? One whale stacker could could do that on their own and, and impact the market. Think the Hump Brothers, right? So that could happen. Hey, good morning. Thanks for uh, thanks for your comment. It was just fading, so I didn't get to read the whole thing. So thanks for stopping in. So that's the first narrative you should ignore in the short term is industrial use. Um, silver that is mined, like, oh, well, they're melting junk silver to, to make industrial silver. Yeah, some, but, uh, you know, silver is still coming out of the ground and it's still manufactured as wire conductively, just like copper, right? So ignore that narrative. Uh, Number two is that silver is a hedge against inflation, so we need to have have silver. Well, look at the last, oh, year and a half or so. In the last year and a half, we've seen inflation, if you're to believe the consumer price index, go to, what, six-some percent? Uh, 9% by some metrics. And yet, what has silver done in the last two months, three months? It's gone down. So you can hear someone talk about the inverse relationship that silver has to the dollar, and as, as inflation goes up, down, the you know silver, silver value increases. The value of money goes down. The value of silver goes up. Now, in the short term, look at the chart. The charts do not lie. Ignore narratives and look at charts. Go back and look at periods of heavy heavy inflation and see what silver has done. The markets crashed in 2008, and if you had gone all in on silver in 2008, it would have taken you until 2011 to see its all-time high, right? So that's three years. That's a three-year gap. So... Ignore the inflation narrative over the short term. Again, this is one of those things that's that's going to get the Wall Street uh, silver crowd to dump their silver onto the market and further drop the silver price. Um, Oops, cutting my own face off here. Sorry, I'm just trying to relieve some of the shaking from being in my car. Number three, silver is the only commodity that's Oh, it's all time high. Well, whoop de frickin' do. Whoop de do. It could it be that silver demand isn't as high as everybody claims it is for the industrial use? Could it be? Oh no, it's getting hammered. It's getting manipulated. Uh, it's it's uh, J P Morgan is manipulating. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Sorry. That is that is a dumb argument. Um, you know, that would mean that to have, to, to let's just reverse the argument and say, um, anything that's at its all time high should be sold. Therefore, do you believe that about Amazon stock? Maybe, maybe you do. So dump it, get rid of it. It's, it's a, uh, it's a bad argument. Um, and, and, and it's the combination of these things that I think are going to frustrate people. I really apologize for my for my shaky camera here, guys, and I appreciate your patience. I'm slowing down now. So, what was that? So the only commodity below its all-time high. The, the logic is that, therefore, it's going to get to its all-time high. And it will, eventually. Everything is going to hit its all-time high. I mean, Pets.com had its all-time high, right? Then it crashed and it, lo- and it no longer exists. 
And I'm not saying that's going to happen with silver. Um, but it could. <laughs> Look, man, uh, what happened to salt can happen to silver. And don't think it can't. Uh, we, You know, you better really like your silver. Well, it's never been worth zero. Well, if it goes to zero, you better really, really like it because you're stuck with it. <laughs> so uh, the fourth narrative that we need to ignore as stackers because it's a bad short-term argument is that it's always been money. Silver has always been money throughout the world. It's always been recognized as a monetary metal. Great. But who in the world is using silver as money right now? Nobody. Nobody is trading silver for milk or eggs or meat or honey or anything else. So silver is, right now, it is an asset class. It is not money per se. Now, I understand the difference between money and currency. But what you have to understand here is that what is what is the um, what is the uh, utility of money, and does silver meet that utility? Sure, it does once you've sold it, but but because you have to sell it, it is therefore an asset class. I don't believe that in any in any time in the short term future, and I'm saying ten years. I don't believe any time in the next ten years that we are going to be bartering silver for anything other than a fiat currency, which we have to exchange for, to buy things. So just because it's always been money, you know, that's a, a, what is, that's a fallacy that is called the, uh, help me out here. Um, well, anyhow, there's a fallacy that, that's, that is called, and I want to say genetic fallacy, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. Anyhow, just because it's always been money, that's not true. It hasn't always been money because it hasn't been money since 1964 in the United States, since 1967 in Canada. Um, of course, there are certain denominations that have had 35 40% silver, but it hasn't been money forever. The final thing, the final thing that you need to disregard in the short term is that silver is more rare than gold. Therefore, therefore, it's going to the moon. Well, guess what? Silver is what you get as a byproduct of mining for other metals like gold, like copper, and like other rare earth, uh, rare earth metals that are used for electronic vehicles. So it's a byproduct metal. So, yes, we're pulling it out of the ground at 8 to 1, and um, a lot of silver is not scrapped, it's sent right into a, 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 a landfill, but look, we can mine those landfills, there's no reason we couldn't, uh, the technology could happen for that, so so what if it's more, more rare than gold, if it's more rare than gold, then how come the ratio uh, expands and contracts so much, anywhere from 55 or 60 to 1, all the way up to, I think the highest I ever saw is 121 or 123 to 1, it doesn't matter. That is a narrative that does not matter. What people want you to believe is that someday all the silver is going to be gone. And what we have in our safe or in our backyard and our safe deposit box is all that's going to be left. And the price is going to spike. And then we're going to, we're going to be in charge. We're going to be able to set our own prices. It is nonsense. It is nonsense. Silver is a long-term play long term. Gold too, for that matter. I could make all of these exact same arguments for gold to some degree. Maybe not the industrial use argument. But I can make a lot of these arguments for gold and they stand. What I want you to um, come to understand is that whatever reason it is that you're stacking silver, just because you believe it doesn't make it true and it doesn't mean it's going to affect the metals. What I want people to do is to, to start to understand technical analysis and start to understand how markets work and the psychology that plays into market pricing. You know, I mean, there are professionals, there are whales who count on our narratives to bet against us that will long or short based on these narratives and what's looking strong right now. So there's no manipulation of the markets per se. Um, 
that we're not participating in ourselves, whether willingly or not. So anyhow, that is my rant. I am at work. I got to get in there, and I got to I gotta go sell some stuff, y'all. I'm a salesman. So I hope I've sold you on these ideas. Um, believe my narrative, right? <laughs> so anyhow, that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I will see you on the next one.